This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Monday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we lead with economic news away from the global geopolitical struggles that was only average over the weekend. In the week ahead, the key local data is our September labour market situation, which is due on Wednesday. Then on Thursday New Zealand time, the US Fed will review its monetary policy position, quickly followed on Saturday by their non-farm payrolls report for October. There will be a raft of PMI updates this week too, all for October. And a big set of CPI updates are due this week. Most interestingly will be from the EU, Korea and Turkey. Japan is also due to review its monetary policy decision this week, as well as some second-tier countries like the UK and Brazil. And we must not overlook we will get into the meat of the global earnings reporting season this week, which could also be influential. But first, following Friday's surprise surge in US economic growth, details released over the weekend confirmed the sharper-than-expected rise in consumer spending, up 0.7% in September from the prior month, Their core PCE is up 3.7% for the year. The appetite for both goods and services rose at about the same rate. Personal income rose at a consistent 0.3% from the prior month. Their savings rate eased back marginally. But behind the consumption rise, there are signs that Americans are avoiding big-ticket items. Firms are reporting softer demand or a preference for less expensive alternatives. It seems the more you have to think about a purchase, the less likely you will make it. So far, with nearly half of the companies reporting, the Wall Street earnings season is developing into a good one, despite some high-profile misses. Of the 245 companies in the S&P 500 that have reported earnings so far, 77% of them beat earnings expectations. In China, profits there, earned by their big industrial firms, fell by 9% from a year earlier in the first nine months of 2023 amid weak demand at home and abroad and persisting margin pressures. The decrease followed an 11.7% slump in the prior period, so the situation is easing. Things have turned up smartly in the past two months, even if they still lag year-ago levels. And Australia's had the same difficulty we had getting the EU to agree to a trade deal, despite their better hand. The sticking point was access for agricultural products. The top EU officials are Eastern European, with the EU trade chief from Latvia and the agriculture boss from Poland, so expectations should not have been high for a weekend lasted effort at the minister's meeting at the G7. Not unexpectedly, those talks collapsed. Australia wants access for its farm products, the EU wants access to Australia's minerals, but domestic EU politics couldn't bridge the gap. Earlier in 2023, New Zealand took the crumbs of what the EU offered. The Australians have not. The US Treasury 10-year yield is little changed from this time on Saturday, still at 4.85%. A week ago, though, it was at 4.93%. And the price of gold will start today at $2,006 an ounce and up $20 from Saturday to start the week. A week ago, it was at $1,982 an ounce. And oil prices have risen 50 US cents today to be now just under $85 a barrel in the US. The international Brent price has risen more, up a dollar fifty, now at just under $90 a barrel. But these latest price levels are still lower than a week ago. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at 58.1 US cents and marginally softer from Saturday. Against the Aussie, we're holding at 91.8 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're just on 55 Euro cents. That all means our trade weight and index starts today unchanged, at just under 68.2. This time last week it was at 68.4, so again little change. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $34,409 and up 2.2% from this time Saturday. Last week it made a notable 14% move up. Volatility of the past 24 hours has been low, however, at just on plus or minus 0.9%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. <laughs>